The NBA Finals get underway later this week, showcasing the best players in the sport. And lots of young people, of course, dream of playing in the NBA and WNBA, the pinnacle of professional basketball. But for Suyash Mehta, his sports dream was a little different. He wanted to make it as a referee, even dropping out of medical school to start the arduous journey ahead of making it to the pros. Today, he is one of the NBA's newest referees, one of a select group of only 75 and the first of Indian American history heritage to do so. Welcome to the show, Sir Yash. How are you? I'm doing very well, Lindsay. How are you? Thank you so I much am, for having me. I'm good. So glad to have you on the show. Let's go back a bit to your college days. You were a pre-med student following your father's footsteps to become a doctor, to make some extra cash. You started uh, refereeing intramural basketball and then ref some, some high school games as your skills started to improve. Describe for us the moment in 2013 when you were working as a high, at a high school game and, and then everything changed for you. Everything changed. That's right. Uh, that one high school game, I'll never forget. I was doing it as a part-time uh, job almost just to pay uh, for my way through college. And um, I was refereeing high school basketball in the state of Maryland when, believe it or not, there was an NBA scout for referees at one of my games. Uh, that was the turning point of my entire career uh, in life, you could say. Uh, that's when I got asked to uh, come to a tryout camp for the NBA Development League. And that was what started my journey um, to becoming an NBA referee. So there you were, about to enter medical school. The NBA invited you to summer tryout camps. Uh, you did incredibly well against some tough competition and got an offer to referee in the G League, the NBA's minor league. Talk to us about the conversation then that you had with your Indian American immigrant parents who were expecting their son to be a doctor and not a referee. Honestly, I, I get uh, the goosebumps from that conversation uh, to this day, and it uh, wasn't the easiest um, of conversations to have. But, you know, I, I remember vividly uh, discussing it with my mom first, uh, since, you know, the, the motherly love is always there. They always support you no matter what, what decision uh, you make. And um, so I remember uh, telling my mom that night, and we had formulated a plan uh, to tell my dad, who uh, was obviously a practicing physician at the time, that I, I wouldn't be following his footsteps. And at first, they were very skeptical because they didn't really understand what I was giving up. Uh, at the end of the day, they were very, very supportive, and they're very happy with uh, the result. That motherly love, of course, that you talk about. I'm glad that both of your parents uh, embraced it ultimately. And you gave yourself three years, though, to make it in the NBA. It took you seven, uh, but you finally did make it in November of 2020. Now that you are in the big leagues, take us inside your routine for a game. Is there anything that you do that the average fan might not be aware of? You know, people do believe that sometimes we just show up and referee the games and, and move on. But realistically, we uh, are on the road anywhere between uh, 20 to 25 days a month. And uh, we usually get into any uh, given city the night before. And the preparation really begins when we arrive into the, the, the game city. Uh, we usually have a day of game meeting um, around 11 a.m. Uh, of the day of game. And that is when we discuss the potential matchup that we have that given night. And we go over all the tendencies, the the beefs that players might have, the history. We we usually uh, will get to the arena about 90 minutes prior to tip, and that's when we will um, we will get ready for uh, the game. And you talk about the beef that that some of the players might have. How do you handle some of the world's best athletes? at times openly criticizing the decisions that you make on the court and, and also the booze in the, the stadium as well from the, the fans. You know, one, one of the things that I always stick by is, you know, try to make every negative situation into a positive situation. And uh, so, you know, we really we have to diffuse a lot of high escalated situations and you try to make it, uh, you know, an approach where every side is go going, to, going to understand where you're coming from. But sometimes there are, there are heat of the uh, moment situations where, you know, the players uh, lose their uh, control a little bit. And at the end of the day, we have to be the level-headed um, voice of reason that upholds the standards of each game. Analytically as a whole, as a staff, you know, we're, we're approximately 95% accurate. And so what happens a lot, you know, is the fans only get to see the 5% that, that we may have uh, missed incorrectly. And that gets amplified and mag magnified. And 
Therefore, we lose sight of like the, the, the 95 percent of the great that was done for the game. Just to get a sense of how much do you love basketball? Was this something that was a passion of yours growing up? And and also curious because we did show a picture of your parents standing at center court with you. So we know that they were there and stood by your side when you watched out of uh, when you dropped out of medical school. But but I have to imagine they're very proud of you now. Yeah, honestly, the, the the happiness it brings them is um, it's been you know that's what's been my driving factor, and um, they they've become tremendous NBA fans. Uh, they they haven't missed a single one of my games. In fact, they watch you know my colleagues' games now and tell me how that uh, how those <laughs> games are going. Uh, but no, they, it, it really brings me a lot of joy. It brings them a lot of joy, and I've always loved uh, the game of basketball growing up. Uh, you know, the, the idols, the role models, uh, you know, obviously Michael and Kobe. And it was, it was always like great to see um, uh, basketball. And now I get to be a part of it, you know, to have the best seats on the floor. Um, really, re you really, really have to love this job. Otherwise, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so easy. I can imagine that that is true. Suryash Mehta, we thank you so much for joining us, sharing your story on the last day of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. We can't wait to see you on the court next season. And you can see the NBA Finals, of course, beginning this Thursday on ABC. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.